Hey everybody, it's Al Captain, and welcome back to Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. Last time we picked up our uh, former assistant Sophia Hapgood, who is a uh, archaeologist turned psychic, and have ended up here in Tikal to uh, meet Dr. Sternhart. And we could wander in, but the easier way to get him to come out here is just a minute. He somehow That's is my shop. psychic and can tell. He's psychic, really. He can tell when people are looking at his can stuff. Can I help you with something? Postcard, replicas of the temple, souvenir mugs. Uh, no thanks, Mister. Charles Sternhardt, PhD, independent thinker, researcher, and merchant. What can you tell us about the temple? Glad you asked. The locals claim my and Indians built it. Now I ask you, does this look like the work of primitive savages, or does it seem much too civilized? Uh... From compared to, like, the Chichen Itza in Mexico, it looks very comparable. Are you saying the, uh... Local Indians, natives, did not build the Chichen Itza? I don't know. I think it's doable. Let's see. I'm hoping to find some evidence of Atlantis here. Evidence is easy. You're surrounded by it. Proof? Now that's hard. Oh, great. Well, what can you tell us about Plato's lost dialogue? I'm the one who translated it. I can tell you that. I'd worry you were here to steal my last copy, but someone called Mr. Smith beat you to it. Oh, no. Yeah, that's uh, very unfortunate. What can you tell us about Mr. Smith? He showed up last week, a tall man with a German accent and a pistol. He could have taken all my souvenirs, but he only wanted the lost dialogue. Yeah, because, I mean, that's that one sounds a lot more unique than the other ones. Can we take a look inside? How do I know that you aren't a pair of silly tourists? I only show the temple to reputable scholars. I mean, we asked about the lost dialogue. How many people just even know what that is? I'm Dr. Indiana Jones. Is that scholarly enough? Indiana? Sounds like the name of one of your states. Or, or possibly a cat. Actually, it was the name of a dog. Sophia! I'd really like to explore the temple. Tell me the name of the lost dialogue of Plato. Oh, uh, look at all these are good names. The Tetrahedron, the Pleiades, the Gluteus of Maximus, or the, what you really need to do is, and in order to save a bit of time, because as much fun as it is to do these, it really makes like, it drags out the time to uh, do this little bits if you don't do this. Just say, I don't know the title. Title! <laughs> Obviously, you're not serious about this. And then, hello there, Mr. Parrot. These parts are fun, though. Polly want a cracker? Polly want a cracker? <laughs> Me and you. I'm Tyler, too. <laughs> Echo. Echo. It's fun to talk to the parrot, but whatever the thing you had told Sternhart last, like Gluteus Maximus or Tetrahedron or whatever, or whatever you said, he'll you can say that to him and he'll say something about it. But to find the title. You say I don't know the title. Title. I'm a friend of Socrates. Socrates. Friend of Socrates. Well now, let me guess. Hey. Yes. You and the little woman decided to take home that special mug, eh? Little woman, huh? About exploring the temple. Tell me the name of the lost dialogue of Plato. The Hermocrates. That's it. That's it. It's not surprising oh. at all that you were able to figure it out. Well, now, perhaps I was one minute after you, you didn't know what it was. What doing. Walk this way, please. I don't trust this guy, Indy. 
I know what you mean. Come on. We're coming. Here we are. Let's We're see coming. what you can do. Looks like it could use a nose. Engraved symbols of water and life. Ooh, pretty. This one looks different, more deeply etched. Can I talk to you, Sophia? What's up? I really need a distraction. Could you talk to Sternhardt and keep him occupied? Okay. Dr. Sternhardt, I'd like to speak to you. Let me water to the end of this corridor where it's not suspicious at all. I can't. Years of tarnish have it all gummed up. So while Sophia ah! is distracting him, we can get this kerosene lamp that we really, really wanted. Good thing that pest Sternhardt's not around. Oh yeah, he's already annoyed at him. And then with every kerosene lamp, you have to open the kerosene lamp. Better not spill the kerosene. I feel like that is a part that shouldn't matter. Excuse me, won't you? Let's see what- Look, the kerosene ate away the tarnish. Aha! Remarkable! Wow! So, you took my lamp, eh? Oh, uh, yes, I hope I did. you know what you're doing. Uh, obviously did something, you just said it was remarkable. Now I got it. Marvelous! This guy is easily impressed. It's a stone carving. What needs a nose? This thing does. It fits perfectly. Now it looks kind of like an elephant. Amazing! Wow! Look at that! Astonishing! What other words could I use? These are all- Bless my soul! The tomb of an Atlantean king! Here's a small stone disc with images of land and sea engraved on it. I do believe it's a world stone! Yeah. At last I have the thing! Well, there's a world stone. Goodbye, fellow seekers! Wait! Oh no, he got away! Shucks. Follow him! It's almost invisible. Open the door! It won't budge. Nope, can't get it. Who knows, maybe it is the tomb of an Atlantean king. Who knows? What we do care about is... There's one... Too bad for Sternhardt. He missed the Oracalcum bead. The one bead. Bye bye, parrot. You're fun. Let's find the airport. All right. I theoretically I should go to a the Azores to talk to Costa, but I think I can go directly to Iceland because there's something I need to pick up here now. I'm not a hundred percent sure. It just saved me a little bit of time. Oh, yep, there we go. He's like bent over. Too bad, he's frozen solid. A little too dedicated to his work, I guess. I can't move it. Yep, he's done. But now... It looks like a bead would fit in the eel's mouth. It looks like Heimdall managed to chip the eel head free. Aha, uh -huh, nice of him to chip that eel head away. It fits perfectly. Whoa! It's summoning spaceships! Look, it melted itself right out of the ice. Yep, good enough. Thank you. It's a bronze coil. Sweet. And we're done in Iceland. Normally, you What's wouldn't... for the airport? You wouldn't know to come here. Actually, I'm not sure they ever tell you that you're supposed to come back here. But... There's really no point in coming here until you get that eel. You'll see why in a minute. This is the first... This game is how I first found out about the Azores. And the islands that are like out in the middle of the uh, 
Atlantic, I say in the middle, whatever. It's like the most western part this is his house? of I this guess is Europe, it. technically. I believe they are Spanish possessions. Mr. Costa? Keep your shirt on. Be firm, but polite. It might be Portuguese, I'm not sure. I suppose you're selling something. If it's not a priceless artifact, I don't want it. You have a bathroom in there I can use? Yes and no. Now go away. Nice going, Indy. I could have done better. Yeah, sure. It was fun. So, really, you just need to... He doesn't like Indietto, so you have to go talk Listen. to Sophia. Yes? How'd we get mixed up with this screwball? The screwball in Iceland, remember? Nah. Here, you talk to the man. My pleasure. And now we're controlling Sophia. My necklace. There's nothing to look at. That's weird. She talked in a... He and Jones' voice. Which is a bug. Mr. Costa! Keep your shirt on! He's a touchy old bird. Watch and learn, Dr. Jones. Well, hello, beautiful. Comes out immediately. Professor Costa, my name is Sophia Hapgood. Madam Sophia? A renowned psychic? Renowned? I hope my friend didn't pester you too much. He's a friend of yours? Well, no, he didn't pester me that much. That much? He just has to learn to be more tactful. You said it. He's ruder than I am. Yeah. How can I help you? What can you tell us about Plato's Lost Dialogue? What do you want to know? Do you have it? Nope. Have you read it? Nope. Do you know what's in it? Not exactly. Can you get it for me? Sorry. Ah, oh, you're not very helpful. Do you know where we could find it? Well now, that depends. Depends, huh? I might trade the information for a rare Atlantean artifact, such as a certain necklace I've heard about. I'll never trade away my necklace. Well then, if that's how you feel, surprise me. Would you do business with my friend here? Madam, I'll do business with anyone. Thanks for your help. Goodbye for now. At your command, madam. Don't be a stranger now. Well, there you go. What a charming old man. Trade, huh? Basically, what you learn from this is Sophia is very attached to her necklace. Excuse me. Yes? I think you better take over. Okay, I'll give it a try. All right. Hey, Mr. Costa. Mr. Costa? You again? What do you want? Let's talk about a trade. Okay. What you got? I have this, uh... American I'm offering this genuine American-made bullwhip. Not a chance. What good is a whip in this day and age? Got anything else? I am. I'm offering this rare archaeology magazine. That magazine rejects all my articles. Ouch. You keep it. Haha, <laughs> that's funny. Got anything else? Well, yes, I do. I'm offering this mysterious eel figurine. Ooh. Now that looks interesting. You've got a deal, mister. How does he know it's Atlantean? Now listen carefully, I don't know exactly where to find it, but... The Lost Dialogue of Plato is in the Ward Collection, got that? I think so. The Ward Collection. Very good, nice doing business with you. The Ward Collection? You know something, Sophia? I believe Barnett College owns the Ward Collection. What a huge coincidence! Makes a uh, quite much more fun for gameplay. Doctor Uberman, oh. fantastic news! Scary place Corona, in Germany. At last! 
see what Herr Jones has kindly provided. What on earth? Isn't it amazing? You fool! You come back to show me this, this, this... Prehistoric knick-knack? Herr Doctor, I believe this knick-knack, as you call it, comes from the lost city. This guy is so Can over the top. Have failed. I see no evidence here of some magical metal plato called Orichalcum! Look here. Concealed in the base is a small shiny bead. And it glitters like fire! Exactly fire. as Plato described! It's my guess we found the treasure we seek. I never guess! We must test! We must test! I'm going to shock it with everything I've got! Oh my goodness! Oh my God. We've done it! The energy of uranium without any radioactivity! And those smug American scientists know nothing! That gives me an idea. Suppose I place the bee inside the statue's open mouth. Oh, crazy! You like saw the drill. that? Think of trucks powered by these beads. Think of tanks. Think of airplanes. Use your imagination, Colonel! Think big like the American! Think of bombs! Oh! Bombs! Alright, so now we are wandering through Barnett College looking for the Ward Collection. So why are you dragging me in here? This is Caswell Hall. We store all our junk here. You think Plato's Lost Dialogue is junk? I used to. Now I'm not so sure. Well, when you figure it out, I'll meet you in your office. Okie dokie. And this part, you just gotta kinda look around the... It says... Museum. Movie tonight, the 39 steps. It says, for sale, 1937 Ford Coupe, like new, 300 bucks. 300 bucks. It says, movie tonight, no the 39 steps. 39 steps. It says, for sale, Come 1937 on, Ford. It says, for sale, Woodstock typewriter with floating carriage, 50 bucks. Okay. Where to look? The volume got loud again for some reason. It's an old lecture hall desk, complete with a wad of gum, I'll bet. And I'm just gonna have to pick up all the stuff for everything I can do. It sure is gooey. A fine example of braided hemp. So loud. Alright, so I pick up this. It's from the Shamit collection. Very sharp. Alright. I want to pull this. The floor isn't slippery enough. Not it won't move. Enough. So that's Shamit collection. Looks like beadwork from the Phoenix collection. Phoenix collection. We need some way to grease the floor to get that up there. Till then. Tip or bookcase. I believe it's part of the old Pierce collection. It's Pierce collection, so we don't care about that one. Normally, you can uh, use this arrowhead and take open the screws and open up the back of the uh, bookcase. It changes every time, like where it is, so you can't just know. All right, and something you can do is you can use. 
the gum with the coal chute. I think I'll stick this on my shoes for traction. You can what walk. do you know? The gum works! I don't know if that would actually work or not. I believe it's part of the oh. old ward collection. There you go. Found it already. It's much too heavy to carry. Wait, what? It's much too heavy to carry. Too heavy to carry? It's made out of wax. Ah. A cat idol. But unlike the others, it's made of wax. So... I won't do this quite yet, because I want to show you the other things you can do. But what I'm going to do in a minute is you take this wax cat and you throw it in the furnace. But if you want to see me get the lost dialogue, probably fast forward about like three minutes from here. But otherwise, I'm going to go show you the other things you can do. Which part of it involves walking all the way back to your office. Well, don't just stand there. Go find Plato's Lost Dialogue. Hey, I gotta do stuff first. Phew. Guess I should have cleaned it out. I would like the jar. I guess it's mayonnaise, but it looks like used motor oil. Here. Yeah. Shelf. We can look around his office, too, since we haven't done this any. Nothing up here but a few broken pots. No, well, that's lame. Here's a thuggy idol. Ah, uh, thuggy. From like, uh... Uh... Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Nothing useful in here. There's a trunk with nothing useful in it. What a big red herring. Alright. But yeah, you come back for this. Yeah, why is it so loud? Climb this rope. Now that you have the Alright, come up here, the music calms down. There we go. So we do that, you can pull this. Pull it again. And climb the totem pole. And then up here, it's like a couple of... It's some kind of funeral urn. I believe it's part of the old Dunlop collection. So if we were looking for the Dunlop collection, we could come up here and open that up. Marcus still thinks this chest belonged to Columbus. I wonder if you can actually open it. I can't lift the lid. No, I guess not. Should we pick up that candlestick? Must be made out of lead. There. full of air. <laughs> it's full of air. So basically, I think there might be only three spots. You can either find it in this urn, which isn't always the Dunlop collection, some of these other random names. You might be able to find it in like this thing of shelves here, if it had been whatever collection this is. Or you can come down to this part. You can use the arrowhead with the screw. Ouch! The screw came out, but that hurt. So he's not going to use it again. I can't unless I find a way to protect my hands. Use the dirty rag with the screw. Or the dirty rag with the, not the screw, the arrowhead. And you can use this to go through all. It's of unscrewed. Them. Go through all five, and you can get to the uh, the book inside of there. That'd be. I believe it's part of the old Pierce collection. If you just happen to be looking for the Pierce collection, it was 
call the Pierce Collection. Or you can do like we did and found the cat. We use the wax cat with the furnace. This isn't working. Wait, what? Okay, I have to open the furnace. Come on, you knew what I meant, game. The wax is melting. There's a manuscript inside. The Lost Dialogue of Plato. That seems really weird. I feel like his book would be uh, ruined. But we got it. We found the Lost Dialogue of Plato. The Hermocrates. That is go back to... Let's go stop right in front. Shoot. Alright, I'm going to save here because there's a very important decision that comes up very shortly. And... Uh, let's see if it's called this. Before decision... I got it. I found Plato's lost dialogue. Really? Yeah, I got it. Our jungle friend Sternhardt is quite the scholar. It's right here in my hand. Let me see. Oh yeah, we can read through this. The Hermocrates. Now at last I have... I guess this is by Sternhardt. Now at last I have Plato's lost dialogue translated entirely. The Greek original is lost, so I've used the Arabic text I found in an Italian monastery years ago and always thought was a hoax. Now I wonder... Could this remarkable book hold the secret to Long Glass Atlantis? Probably not. No one will publish it, that's certain. The fear of ridicule is too great. To be safe, I've sent a copy to Ward. Charles Sternhardt, London, 1922. And you click on these uh, paper clips on the sides to uh, move. From Hermocrates. In shame, I hereby do recant the time and place whereof Critias spoke. And raining Egyptian into Greek, he made a tenfold error. Instead of lying 3,000 miles hence, Atlantis may well have been 30,000 miles away, or perhaps it was less than 300 miles from our own shores. Likewise, it may be that the last kingdom held sway as many as 100,000 years ago, or as few as 1,000, Socrates. If a kingdom arose on earth beyond anywhere men might travel, they would never hear of it. We ought to accept the lesser figure. Using some common sense there, Socrates, good job. We're gonna come back to this paperclip a lot. So Glorious Atlantis founded two colonies, the lesser, 340 miles north of the city, and the greater, 390 miles to the south. Gates of the kingdom opened only with aid of special stones. At many outposts, a sunstone sufficed, if sunset made the tall horns red. At the greater colony, a moonstone was also needed, with pale dawn to shred the darkest night. To approach Atlantis itself, a world stone was required as well, with only a waning moon to protect the city from grim night. You remember a world stone? That's what we found in Tikal and Charles Sternhardt grabbed and ran off with. Final entrance yielded only to contrary minds. And it is said that dwellers in Atlantis had no horses, nor any need of them. Or calcum, the metal that glittered like fire. This they had instead. They cast it into shiny bees and used them as we do minted coins, paying statues to do their work as if by magic. When their colonies were failing, wise men carved strange devices out of amber to search for the metal. But only proud Atlantis ever yielded a supply. Socrates. You have called the king of wealthy, but surely this is absurd. As the waters rose around the city, the kings of Atlantis, one after another, sought to hold off fate. Knowing mortal men would never rule the sea, they planned a huge colossus, which by use of ore calcum, ten beads at a time, would make them like the gods themselves. Nurab Saul was one such king. He it was, say the wise men of Egypt who first perched men in the Colossus, making many freaks of nature at times when the celestial spheres were well aligned. Socrates, this I doubt, we are hearing a child's tale. So yeah, you really read this one because all this stuff is going to be very important later.
I don't see how this will help us find Atlantis. Isn't it obvious? No, it's much too vague. Our only hope is supernatural inspiration. Nah, oh, really? No. Let's just figure out what those colonies were. We need the names. Other sources may identify them for us. I wonder. Where's my spirit guide when I need him? Come on, Sophia. The answer's in the book, not outer space. So he got his dates mixed up. Why is that so important? Because it feels like you're making stuff up. Plato's error means distances could also be wrong. So what if they are? The big thing right here. If Plato is right, Atlantis is in the Mediterranean. You mean 300 miles from Greece instead of 3,000? Yes, the cradle of civilization. You could be right. He once told me he came from the middle of the world. That's what Mediterranean means. Yeah, yes, it's very true. Enough with your fantasies. I'm talking facts. Wait, quiet. I think I'm getting something. I don't like your upsell. Don't push this too far, Sophia. Will you just shut up and listen to me? Uh, Among the artifacts that Kerner stole was a small stone disc with a hole in it. I'm sure it was one of the three stones mentioned in Plato's book. And I didn't find it. I bought it from Omar al-Jabbar in Algiers. Why should he help us? Or was it Alain Cartier in Monte Carlo? Either way, Algiers or Monte Carlo. This much I do know. You'll need all three stones if you want to find Atlantis. All right, I'm ready to go. Not so fast. First, I'm going to tell your fortune. Ooh, Look into fortune. my eyes. Deep into my eyes. It sounds like hypnotism. For Pete's sake, I'm not going to hurt you. Now hold still. You are a remarkable man, Dr. Jones. You possess great strength of character. You are resourceful. But you're better with your fists than your head. Ah, funny. I foresee combat and violence along your path to Atlantis. A path too dangerous for me. Alright. Now I'm gonna save, really save here. Where you save before decision... yeah. Whoa, volume got loud. So this is the decision point right here. So, basically, there's three paths. And one is the Wits Path, which you might have seen in my save file. I had one where I played on the Wits Path, just to try to remember how I play this game. Where it's Indy by himself, and he has to solve a lot of puzzles. There's the Fists Path, which corresponds with So It'll Be Rough, that's the way I like it. Where basically you get into a lot of fist fights. And there's a couple puzzles. This is the, uh... Gosh, I don't know why the volume gets so crazy. So this, I'd rather think my way through it is the wits path. And then the middle one is I'd rather tackle this together with you. And that one is... That one is the uh, team path where you and Sophia go together and solve puzzles and do stuff. So... This will be my real four, four decision save. And this will be a good place to end this episode. So I can play through all three paths from this point. And I mean they're all about they're all basically about the same length. They're all different. They all they all share similar locations, but a bunch of the stuff you do is different. You'll see the similarities and differences between them but i can play through all of them from this point and they all end at the same place basically so i will play through all three paths and then after i get to atlantis 
spoiler alert, we're going to go to Atlantis. Uh, and then I'll play the last Atlantis part by itself, because Atlantis part's the same pretty much regardless. So, I will uh, end this episode here, and you can see what path we take to start with. This is Al Captain signing off. If you like this video, please hit, hit that like button and subscribe. And next time we'll continue with uh, Indiana Jones and the fate of Atlantis. See you next time.